Hello and welcome to this section of the Trig and Precalculus Tutor. Here we're going to talk about the law of sines, and in the next section we're going to talk about the law of cosines. Now law of sines, law of cosines, they both deal with triangles, uh, learning how to solve for different legs of a triangle. And that has so many uh, applications in so many areas of science. I mean, you could be building something in your backyard that's triangular and you need to calculate how much wood you need and so you'll need to know the angles and figure out how long the boards have to be around the edges, let's say. Uh, I mean, there's many, many things. I could, I could do a million word problems on how to use law of signs. What we're going to do here is introduce what the law of signs is and what it is and then we're going to do a, a simple problem here and then in the next section we'll do a couple of word problems to show you how you would translate a word problem into a math problem to actually use the law of signs to calculate. Now before I get started I want to let you know that you've already been exposed to triangle you know, arithmetic at, at some point, right? You should already know that every triangle has 180 degrees if you add all the angles up on the inside. That's sort of something you just have to know that we've covered also in Volume 1 of Trig and Precal and also in Geometry. We've already covered that in the Geometry Tutor. Every triangle has 180 degrees. We've also learned, you should have been exposed to the Pythagorean Theorem where you can find the sides of a triangle but it, those things have to be right triangles. Pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared. It only works if one of those angles is 90 degrees, a right triangle, right? Law of sines and law of cosines is actually more powerful than that because they apply to all triangles. All shapes, all sizes, right triangles, uh, skinny triangles, fat triangles, it doesn't matter. Law of sines and cosines are much more powerful, really, because they're much more broadly applicable. So for the law of sines, I'll just write it on this board. We're going to need a picture. So let's draw a triangle. It could be any shaped triangle, but we're just going to draw this one uh, here. Notice this is not a right triangle. There's no 90 degree angles in here. We've got skinny angles, fat angles, and so on. So what I'm going to do is label this side, side A, and the angle that's opposite of side A, I'm going to label it angle alpha. That is angle alpha that you've probably seen at some point in your classes. I'm going to label this side, side B, and the angle that's opposite of side B, this one over here, I'm going to label it angle beta. Beta is just a B with like a little tail hanging off the end. All right, and then I'm going to label the only other side I have, C in blue, and the angle that's opposite of that, I'm going to label it gamma, which is kind of like a ribbon, you know, like a uh, uh, you see ribbons for all kinds of occasions. A gamma is kind of like a little ribbon like hanging like that. So the red goes with the red, the purple goes with the purple, the blue goes with the blue. I'm trying to use colors to help you out. Basically when you uh, uh, um, set up the law of signs it's just easier if, if you understand the angles that are opposite. So A goes with alpha, B goes with beta, C goes with gamma. The law of signs is very simple to write down and it says the following. Law of sines is the following. The side A of this triangle divided by the sine of the angle alpha is equal to the side B of this triangle divided by the sine of the angle beta. But that's also equal to the side C of this triangle divided by the sine of angle gamma. This is the law of signs and that's why I had to draw the triangle. What it's saying is if I take if I know how long this is like in meters right or feet or meters it doesn't matter what unit you're using if I know how long side A is in meters I, 